Okay folks, this is Dragon again, uh, the second in the series of natural disasters uh, with generators. Uh, this is a 5.5 kVA diesel electric start generator which we use uh, during uh, power outages or uh, situations where you've got uh, long term grid failures. Um, a couple of things to note, uh, with all generators being diesel or gasoline, always have a fire extinguisher handy and know how to use it. This generator I keep in my back shed, it's not waterproof so I can't use it outside. That being the case, the problem is exhaust fumes. As we all know, I hope, you can't run generators uh, closed indoors uh, because of the fumes. Believe it or not, some people do it uh, and suffer the consequences. So what I've done, just got a piece of flexi hose coming out of the top of the exhaust. It's a metal flexi hose, so it'll take the heat and just run it outside so the exhaust vents to the outside. The fuel, I keep this one fueled up with diesel all the time, but I also put this additive in it. Um, prolongs the life of the fuel and more importantly uh, it keeps uh, or reduces the uh, build up of fungus and what they call diesel bug in the fuel tank. Uh, this uh, generator takes about 15 litres of fuel. You can see there it's got a mechanical fuel gauge. Again, this one came with one of those small batteries I covered in the last generator video, so uh, pretty much the same problem. This one does have a fuel preheater, um, but you're lucky to get two starts out of it before the battery uh, was flat. So what I did was I modified it, put heavier uh, battery leads on it, and again use a light truck lead acid battery. This one I keep charged up um, either on a solar panel or battery charge depending what uh, what day of the week it is. A couple of features of this one and all generators are different. Key start when you turn that way and kick so I won't start this generator because it's going to be too noisy for my voice. Uh, front meter panel as on the last generator check your voltage, you might have to adjust your governor a bit, this will vary sometimes with the load you've got on the generator. Two 240 volt 50 hertz single phase outlets, circuit breaker for it, and a 12 volt uh, charging system uh, for any other types of uh, lead acid um, or uh, perhaps deep cycle batteries. I don't tend to use these, I just uh, parallel clamp it up to that one um, with uh, heavy battery cables and with, as with all generators um, you've got to have a good earth on them. If something goes wrong and a chassis goes live uh, then you're going to find yourself in all sorts of trouble. As with all diesels, the biggest thing with them is filters. Got to keep the fuel filters clean. This is the fuel filter. There's a tap up under here that I turn off when the generator is not in use. Uh, diesel being a very weepy fuel. Um, this is your throttle stop run. It just runs, uh, when on run, it just runs flat out. When I'm doing a test run, um, again I use the two bar heater. And on occasions, uh, when we've got it connected up to the house, I actually have to turn this heater on to load the generator down a bit more. This generator runs my whole house. Um, we had a situation last year, we lost power for 10 days, thanks to a big tree limb uh, cutting off the uh, power to the, to the house. It took 10 days to sort out. The thing with generators is you've got to work out what type, what size, fuel, the capacity, 
uh, what you want to uh, run with it as I said refrigeration in a um, survival situation um, the last thing you will want to lose is all the food refrigerated food in, in your fridges and freezers and that's the first to be consumed normally um, but also uh, things like uh, if you've got to use uh, different power tools and that sort of thing for repairs and another thing that people don't realize is that uh, uh, people operating medical equipment in their homes so uh, you need to be aware of that too what I've done is uh, I've got an electrician out uh, and uh, he put uh, a uh, plug into the, a power box with a circuit breaker, uh, had it professionally done and um, just through throwing a sequence of switches um, I can feed the whole house if I have to. Um, our experience is that yes, we do have to do a bit of load shedding. High uh, demand devices like some cooking, um, as in um, toasters, electric jugs, electric fry pans, even microwaves um, consume a lot of power. So whenever you're using a generator, do a few test runs. It'll help you. Uh, decide what you might have to load shed in the house uh, so you don't stall your generator or overload it there's a lot uh, that goes into it um, with this generator um, when it was running we don't run it all the time uh, last time in a 10 day period uh, we lost power ran for about 3 hours on 4 hours off um, and you've also got to remember that when you're running a generator you just don't have to start it up and walk away and leave it, you've got to come out and check it refuel it, check your lubes, check for any oil leaks fuel leaks and that sort of thing so you've sort of got to be on top of it all the time the main thing is that uh, when you've got this connected up to your power box turn the mains power switch off uh, the last thing you need is to try and feed this little generator back into the grid it uh, doesn't work too well so uh, talk to your electrician about that and uh, make sure that everybody in your family and your friends know how to operate the generator and how to use the uh, connected into your power box Another thing I should note about uh, diesel engines, as be that generators or vehicles, I've put on here specifically diesel fuel. I have seen and heard of cases where people have put gasoline into diesel engines, be that vehicles or generators, and uh, yeah, it gets rather messy. Uh, don't start the engine, otherwise you have all sorts of problems. And that's about it, folks.